Let's turn to RT's Priya Shreeda in our Washington studio, who's got RT contributor Wayne Matson with her. Over to you then, Priya. Hi. Well, many people are saying that this partnership is absolutely necessary. If North Korea stays nuclear and Iran becomes nuclear, then the possibility of regional pr proliferation is not too far-fetched. But what would this partnership mean for the rest of the world? Well, joining me to discuss this is RT contributor and investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. Wayne, thank you so much for joining me. So what has been the reaction in the United States to this announcement of a possibility of a partnership between the United States, NATO, and Russia? Well, certainly from uh, President Obama's right, especially the Republican Party, uh, the criticism has already been pretty fierce. Uh, people like John McCain and others, uh, uh, one of the top leaders in the House of Representatives on the Republican side, Eric Cantor from Virginia, all coming out and saying he's let these Eastern European countries down. He's made promises he couldn't keep. Uh, so uh, I think from his own party, though, he's getting uh, a lot of support. And uh, also from people who want to ratchet uh, things down uh, uh, between the United States and Russia, relations became very bad during the Bush and Cheney administration. I think they're breathing very easy that this uh, shield, original shield system is being put aside. And do you think this partnership is likely to happen? It seems like years ago this would have been an outrageous proposition. But do you think that this could happen? Well, I think the uh, the one major issue is the uh, new NATO Secretary General himself, Anders Fogh Rasmussen, uh, former Danish Prime Minister. He's not just a conservative and not just merely an Atlanticist in the traditional sense. He's a neoconservative. He supported George Bush's war in Iraq. Uh, help cook intelligence to get his own troops sent to Iraq. Uh, uh, one of his own Danish intelligence officers, Major Frank Revel, brought this stuff out. Uh, Rasmussen ensured pretty much uh, was behind him going to prison for that. So uh, he's, he's very much part of this whole neoconservative uh, uh, milieu. Uh, and uh, we'll, let, well, let's see what he really means. Does that mean Russian troops could be stationed in places like Alaska, Canada, Greenland? Well, we'll see when the details are worked out. And, you know, today Prime Minister Putin praised Obama's decision, but he said maybe right now is also a time to abandon some of the old trade policies. What do you think about that? Do you think Obama is likely to abandon some of those policies? Well, certainly there are still trade uh, issues that were put in effect when there was the Soviet Union. The jackson vanik uh, uh, law, which uh, uh, linked uh, U.S. trade with this then-Soviet Union to emigration of Soviet Jews uh, to Israel. Israel. Uh, some of these are still in effect, and I think uh, Prime Minister Putin is right that a lot of these should be revisited. They're as old as the Cold War itself. And, you know, today Hillary Clinton also talked about how the United States wants to engage in talks, nuclear talks with Iran. How much of yesterday's decision or announcement had to do with Iran, do you think? Well, I think Iran certainly uh, plays a role in this whole uh, uh, decision uh, uh, by saying that uh, we're going to drop the shield uh, in Eastern Europe aimed at Iran. I think it, it also not only opens up a new uh, uh, chapter in U.S.-Russian relations, but opens up a small window with the Iranians uh, that uh, were not as doctrinaire as we were under the Bush administration. So uh, that might be a very good bargaining chip to have when we go into those direct negotiations with Iran. Well, we'll continue to keep you updated about this potential partnership. But for now, I'm going to throw it back to you in Moscow. Thank you very much for this indeed. That was our correspondent, Priya Shrida, talking to RT contributor Wayne Matson.